Awesome. Uh, welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Thought Plantation Podcast. I am your host, Giovanni, and today I'm very honored to be joined by a, uh, a special guest today. Um, special guest, would you like to introduce yourself to the world? <laughs> special. Oh, th- thanks for that, Giovanni. Um, <laughs> my name is Alice Lolo here, and uh, I'm a journalist slash videographer. Awesome. Now, a reason why I asked you on this podcast, um, and if you heard the last podcast I had on with Hone, um, she made the assumption that um, no one wanted to be on the podcast. So in a way, <laughs> I'm proving her wrong by having you on as a guest. But but also, <laughs> that's that's not the only reason. The other the other reason is that I've, I've always been interested in in well, not me being in media, but I guess the whole uh, world of media. You know, I mean. Yep these days we've never had so much access to information it 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 makes people's heads spin you know um absolutely you know you go back 10 years or so and a lot of the times people would have to rely solely on what was presented to them either through their local news outlet through newspapers and stuff but now with people I, i guess for example like podcasts and people um, putting stuff out there for the world, you have such free roam of information out there, which has its positives and negatives, I guess. Mm. But I guess bef- before we get into the conspiracies of um, fake news <laughs> <laughs> and everything in that, I'm actually more interested in, in your journey, um, Alice, into the whole, uh, into the media world. So um, you want to talk a little bit about that and, and how it all began? Yeah, Um you know what, my, my journey into the media world was kind of unexpected because, um, you know, as you know, I'm a huge film buff. Like, I love film and I had always aimed to sort of move towards the film industry. So um, when I came back to New Zealand to go to uni, um, I did the film TV media paper at Auckland Uni. Mm-hmm. And sort of from there, like, my focus shifted from film to media and a couple of my mates at the time, they were um, interning at this um, at Pacific Media Network, right? Yeah. Um, and I just thought, man, that's so cool that it's a it's a Pacific um, a Pacific based media outlet um, focused solely on Pacific people. And um, yeah, they got me a job there, and I had been there for six years, and now I've um, moved on to another media outlet, Pacifica Media Outlet. Um, called Tangata Pasifika. Awesome. I didn't realize it's been about six years since um, you've worked in media. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it flies by, man. It, it really does. And, mm. um, I mean, looking back at that, like my journey from an intern to, to where I'm at now, I just, I don't know, I, I'm thankful that um, at least I still got my, <laughs> my head screwed on straight. <laughs> but now... I think it's still yeah, early but days, <laughs> but the same could be said for me, anyways. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you you mentioned earlier you initially wanted to get into film, but found yourself more going down a, a slightly different pathway, still within media. When when did that start? I mean, when did you shift from deciding to go from film to, uh, I guess, what what you're doing now? Um, it was it was when I was working at. Um, Pacific Media Network. I think, I think I found that um, you know what what linked my liking for both media and film was the storytelling element. Right. Um, and there were just so many things that I I learnt on the job as an intern and working at that network and going out into the communities and meeting these people that um, it felt more fulfilling. Right. I guess. Yeah. Just meeting real people, seeing you know how they lived, their stories, their struggles and obstacles, and how they'd overcome these things. Um, I think it was more rewarding for me to to actually share their stories rather yeah. than telling my own. That makes sense, but I, I do have to say I, I remember the days when you were releasing short films, um, <laughs> and, and you're you're engaging in a lot of like um, those short film competitions. I, I thought they were quite good. You know, I I, I found them quite entertaining, and you know. I felt like you were, um, you know, you you were, you were running with the big dogs. You know, you had certain people. Uh, what well, what's that? You know, the twenty four hour film festival. I oh, think. 48 hours. Forty eight uh, hours. Yeah. You yeah. know. You know. Um, you have you know literally 
um, people who are well established in in film and stuff putting so much money into their production, and it's what usually a short film of what, five minutes or something like that. Well, you had to sort of work with with you know the equipment with what you had at home, and I think you did quite a, an amazing job. And so I'm, I guess. Oh, I'm, thanks. No, no, it's 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 um it's the truth. You know, I mean, it was very a lot of the stuff they do was very entertaining. Um, and it I guess it started. It must have started from an early age because I remember a very, very old, probably, I don't know if it's your first, you know, uh, first uh, film, but there was one where we did in Tonga. I wasn't part of it, but the one we uh. did with Nelly, Jay, <laughs> Dylan, and, and, <laughs> and you did it in the backyard of Nana's house. And that I have, uh, when I look, when I need something to make me laugh a little bit, you know, in a good way. I always turn to that film, and, and the how, reason, how dare you? How dare you? You call me out like this? No, it's I'm doing it in a good way because what I'm highlighting is how creative you can be with just a camera. I think it's like if you look at films these days, and this is me going into my wannabe uh, uh, film, uh, <laughs> you know what you call <laughs> critique, you know? Yeah. Um, where. A lot of the a lot of the production these days, you see people just chuck millions and millions of dollars into, you know, uh, computer generated stuff, CGI, which is computer generated. I don't know why I just said that twice, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, and I think it's I think the greatest films you you see over the last decade, I don't think utilize a lot of that. Like, I guess you yeah, would, you're right. You know, so I um, guess what I was really you know impressed by was how creative people can get you know yeah i i think that's kind of like a you know they they say it's like a kiwi trait but i consider it a pacific trait as well you know mm. when you just make do with what you have oh for sure and you know in in tonga i mean if you're wondering why jimani brought this this story up it's because we actually grew up in tonga together. Yeah. yes we did <laughs> for those uh, who are a bit confusing um <laughs> and you know, like, you know, growing up in Tonga, sometimes, like, you're just bored, like, out of your mind. <laughs> Especially, you know, on Sundays, like, when you've got nothing to do. And um, I think that's the, the beauty of not, um, you know, having smartphones at that time and not having access to, to the internet all the time and stuff. You just make do with what you have. Um, and you create, like, good times with the people around you. And, yeah, I had always wanted to make something with the cousins. And I'm just thankful that they um <laughs> agreed to participate i don't know i think you bullied them into doing it as well i think jj i must have bullied into doing it but um yeah no, I but mean, they had was, a great time uh, just looking looking did. back at it now it looks like everyone had a great time and it's those memories that they were they're going to cherish forever you know yeah um, they're all big for, big kids now yeah <laughs> i mean uh, for those people who are listening like the the short film that i made was basically a kid's version of the godfather um, pretty much, or it was like a, you know, a, a, like a film noir kind of, you know, yeah. they're, they're battling it out for like ownership of this little island with all these lollies and stuff. Um, yeah, it was, it was good fun. You can, you can tell I was heavily influenced by the Godfather. Eh? Yeah. Were you, um, is there any, is, is, have you put it up anywhere that's public? I know you sort of post it up during special occasions, <laughs> like people's birthdays, but is, is there anywhere that it's sort of clear people can look at it or is that something that you just want to keep private just for the fans i think i just keep it for the family okay. because i know that there are some cousins who feature in that <laughs> video who are like if you post that in public <laughs> like i'm, I'm you, dead you've you know? got classic ones man you got classic ones like of um, my brother jj where he's um advertising crackers that oh yeah. man honestly i wish i think <laughs> Come to think of it, I think I've always played around with just like filming things and, and editing random things mm. at home, eh? Yeah. I think that's where a lot of, um, where all the, the passion comes from, you know? It shows that you really had an eye for detail and camera angles and all that stuff. And, you know, it, it's obviously worked its way through to where you are now, you know? Mm. So where you are now, right? Um, I guess... It, within media, there's a lot of, well, I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of, uh, um, it, it's male dominated. Would you say that? Would you say? Yeah, that? absolutely. So, what's your experience then working as a PI woman in media? Um, you know, when you say male dominated, I think the first 
line that comes to mind is is pale, male and stale. Mm. <laughs> um, you know, I, I see it all the time, especially you know when you go to to sports um, presses or conferences and stuff. And you know, so many times where I've walked into a room, um, and you know, my journalist has been the only PI woman journalist. Mm let alone only female in the room as well and i'm the only pi female camera woman right which has been really interesting um you know going into those sorts of spaces you really have to to hold your own because people are more than happy to you know move your tripod to the side when they they want to get a better shot or mm. you know they're, they're happy to move into the seat in front of you to to get their questions in first it's um it's a really interesting space to to work in um and you definitely notice when you're the odd one out yeah for sure um but to to be honest like um you know you just you can't let those sorts of things phase you because at the end of the day you're there to do a job and if you don't do it well and if you let these you know these factors get to you then that's all that's all on you and it's going to show in your in your work as well so yeah it's it's um interesting but you know you just gotta you just gotta overcome it yeah it, and it is a good point you make about navigating through a very interesting space um because it's not that long ago where we were purely not just dominated by males in media but um that you'd barely see anything pacific related that wasn't in a negative context so i think but but i think the interesting part of it all is you know it, it puts us in a position, and, and when I say us, I, I mean PIs in general. Like, I've, I've got this view, right, where I don't agree that we should be given special privileges to allow us to play on an even, even playing field. Uh, this, this is going to sound very controversial, and you're more than welcome to, uh, to uh, argue a, a counterpoint if you like. But for me, I feel like given... Um, and, and that could come in many forms, um, where we're given a certain number of places um, where it's purely for us, um, or whether we're given special leniency for for certain things. I, I can, you know, specifics. I I can get into specifics at another point. But I guess for me, I feel we should already be competing at their level. You know, I feel like for mm -hmm. and this is not just just in media. I think everything in general is that I know. It's it's easy for a lot of people to put, you know, non-white people into a box and say, you know, they've been this and that. We need to help them. But I think in in a, in a sort of in a, from a different view, it puts us into a mindset where we feel like we need that help. If you if you get my drift, it, it's very different to what the what normal well, I'm gonna say normal people, but what the sort of most commonly held belief is. Um, for a lot of these things, but I, f but from a for from a personal point of view, I feel that given these sort of, and I'm gonna say you know slightly uh, use the word privilege because I can't think of anything better to sort of call it, but I feel like put giving us that um, uh, allowance, like they're allowing us to do it when really we should be stepping up and taking it for ourselves, um, and I don't know how, and, and I guess, and I'm guessing it it could possibly, um, you you may see it or you may not in sort of the field that you work in i think it i, I think i've seen both sides of of the coin to be honest you know um when i look at some of the bus figure students just as an example um some of the bus figure students who go to uni in australia um you know there are no kind of bus figure related programs or initiatives um anything geared towards towards them mm. so um they're sort of automatically thrown into the same playing field as everyone else um regardless of circumstance and um i mean seeing them thrive in that environment it's it's great mm. um but also seeing people who need that help you know who who might be in in certain situations that i might not understand right. or i might not have experienced you know um, and I still see them thrive as well. So, yeah, I think, I mean, there's both sides of an argument that can be made to that. For sure. Um, yeah, but, I mean, when I look at our parents, mm. you know, um, the, the pioneers, like, who 
who end up coming, you know, over overseas, who end up going to like Australia, New Zealand, and you know, there is nothing to reference. Right. Do you, do you get what I mean? No, I do. So I do. yeah, there there were no other bus speaker people who came before them who are studying, you know, what they're studying or in these areas that they're trying to get into. Um, and, you know, they, they've they done amazingly well. And yeah, I have no idea yeah. where I'm going with that tangent. No, but. no, it, you make a good point because people who, I guess you looking, I don't know, a good example is looking at our parents who came before us and coming here where, if anything, I, I, I would argue that they probably had it much more harder than we did. Because there, was, there wasn't mm. at the time. I mean, look at the yeah. 80s during the Dawn Raids and things like that. They had so much things going against them. And yet they were managing to thrive, you know? Yeah. And I guess my feeling is that we we tend to lose that tenacity and, and lose a little bit of that um, uh, resilience over time because of well-intentioned, and, and, and I do mean, you know, well-intentioned sort of um, policies that's put forward by this person or that person, you know, because they are well-intentioned. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, one of the possible byproducts of that, it, it puts us into this uh, mentality where we rely heavily on the people we're trying to work on an even playing field on, you know, because mm -hmm. I guess the argument can be made, we will never play, have an even playing field because uh, we're so far behind in terms of, um, uh, you know, this, this and that. Um, but I still think we, you know, as a people, we need to be striving to, to, for better things, which a lot of people are, you know, which a lot of people are doing. You're doing it in, in media. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are, who are pushing that narrative. Um, and, and it's working quite well for everyone, you know? Mm. So, I hear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that, <laughs> that's a massive tangent. <laughs> <laughs> Massive tangent. So, no, but okay. So we we kind of touched on this a little bit, but I think it, it's worth going to a little bit more. Um, so you've mainly worked for uh, a PI uh, media outlets, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you obviously have come into contact with the you know the usual New Zealand mainstream. Is is there a big difference between the two? Um, I think the first obvious difference would be, you know, in, in terms of content. I mean, you know, we're, we're mainly telling bus speaker based mm. stories, but in terms of the way that it's run, um, judging from where, where I'm at now at, um, at TP, yep. uh, I'd say it's very similar, you know, just mm. the way that, um, the, it's, it's my first experience, you know, working in a, in a media outlet like TP, you know, mm. who, who, um, have been airing on on TV one for like 33 years yeah, I think so time. yeah and um, just the way that they run things like uh, mm. I definitely had to, to come up to speed and um, yeah pretty much step my game up <laughs> <All that stuff. laughs> uh, yeah uh, yeah for sure I mean but, like, um, like 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 the because like like you say it's been running for 33 years so obviously they have found a, a, a place within the entire um, media stream. Oh, yeah. You know? They they were, uh, you know, um, under originally under TVNZ, so they've adopted that way of, of working, that mainstream okay. way of working, uh, um, I have to say. Yeah. But, um, like, coming back to your, your question, like, in terms of differences between mainstream and, and bus speaker, I think um, one, of, one of the things would definitely be point of view. Mm. Points of view. Um you know, the way that, say, for example, New, Hel New Zealand Herald cover a, a bus figure criminal story would yeah. be different from the way that we cover it. Hmm. In, in what way? Well, when you look at New Zealand mainstream media, um, they they tend to tell stories about bus figure or portray bus figure people as, like, unmotivated, hmm. criminal unhealthy um you know super reliant on 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 balangi support right right whereas you know working um in a bus speaker outlet you get to tell the the other side of that story you know yes there may be you know one strand of of bus speaker society as it is everywhere right yeah but um you know they're obviously not covering a whole lot of other things that that bus speaker, oh, about the bus speaker experience, pretty much. So, 
that's what we get to do in our job. Yeah, and, and that's so important. Context is so important because I mm. think, uh, not, not to put too much pressure on you, but I think PI media have, have a big job ahead of them to erase those negative connotations that that go hand in hand at the moment with PIs, you know, and and you you, you you framed it quite beautifully there, as you know that you look at any sort of um, mainstream media, TV one, two, three, news, and any of those major ones at the moment, the popular ones, where anything PR related is either a catastrophe, there's crime, mm. there's um, negative health issues, you know, um, we we'll talk about obesity. Um, they talk about, you know, the only time I've heard them talk about Tonga, um, where we come from, has only been in a negative context. You know, the methamphetamine, um, yep. you know, all, all these other things, but w which are important. They, they are important aspects um, to, to, to knowing um, the news. But, I, but they frame it in a way where that's everything. That encompasses everything, yeah. you know. And that's so unfortunate because that further reinforces people's minds that this is that. And you get that when you exactly. talk to people. You know, you get that when you talk to people. You know, yeah, they, they exactly. have they, they have no intention of of hurting your feelings or, or coming across, you know, um, ignorant. But but they make little comments at that, which is a commonly held view, but is totally not true. You know, absolutely. And that's that's why, you know, representation, like we were talking about representation in, in media, it's not only important for us, bus figure people, Tongan people, it's also important for the other side mm. so that they know that there are that we are like varied <laughs> yeah. people. We're like we're all different. We're not all, you know, just one thing that you're you're portraying us as. Yeah, I mean, some 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 islanders vote for national, you know. Exactly. <laughs> we're you not know? we're not all Labour supporters, you know. Exactly, I'm... and we've got Trump supporters. Yeah, and you know, super super conservative speaker versus you know people who aren't conservative. Like we're we're so far like different places on the spectrum mm, i think we're just as multifaceted as um other cultures you know we're not absolutely. just one thing we're human <laughs> oh absolutely yeah for sure i mean <laughs> the thing is i in, in an ideal world you would celebrate people's differences it, you know for the good things because you know having differences makes things a lot more better it makes makes life a little bit more spicier you know you exactly. don't want you don't want bland you don't want bland yeah um but exactly. at the same time that doesn't mean people shouldn't be treated exactly the same across the board you know um yep. but that's but that's like i mean uh you know that that's work to be done many many years down the line you know i think mm -hmm. i think i think uh, there's a lot of things out there um that's helping uh change people's perspectives of us and 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 who we are as, as people um yeah i still think there's a lot of work to be done still absolutely yeah definitely agree with that on that one yeah so also on the, on this on talking about media you used to be a radio host Alice. Uh, <laughs> yes yes i did yeah <laughs> I, I brought this up because this I, I felt like i had a really close connection with you while you're a radio host um <laughs> because when because mostly what i do for a job is having to drive around and and, and visit people at their home and and it, i happen to be on the road when Alice is on the radio. So, and I used to message her and always get her to give me a shout out. It's like, Alice, yeah. give, me, give me a shout out, Alice. Give me a shout out. You know? Play my song. Play, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pulling those connections. Um, yeah. But talk talk about your time as a radio host and how, how that was. Oh my gosh, you know what? Um, it's, it's one of those things I always forgot about, strangely enough. Um, so, when I was interning at um, Pacific Media Network, one of one of the hosts at the time, his name is Nico. Um, I was just having a conversation with him, and then um, he just said to me, "You know, you've you've got a you've got a voice for radio. Like, I think you'd be really good for radio." And that always just stuck in the in the back of my mind. So, you know, come to a point in time when they're sort of short on on hosts, and they need people to cover the weekends. Um, I put my hand up pretty much, um, nice. to take that on. And I had to, it was crazy. It was like baptism by fire because, you know, I had to learn how to work the panel right, and go live within a week. And then by that Monday, I still remember it, Labor Monday was my very first time on air. Wow. Yeah. And I remember just sweating bullets, <laughs> man, you know? I can imagine. 
You yeah, know? I mean, going going live to the nation, uh, there's there's no feeling like it. No, I mean, Jesus. Just, I mean, it's one thing to do a podcast and have something pre-recorded, and then you have the luxury of editing, you know, after. Yeah. <laughs> but going live, God, that must have been quite freaky. Anything, yeah. any any moment during your time as uh, well? I guess the first thing we should say is like, what what uh, what was the station you um you hosted, Alice? Um. Yes, yeah, so I used to be on UFM. Um, yeah, started as a as a weekend host at the the midnight run as well, um, and then from there moved on to to weekdays. Nice with the big dogs, eh? Weekdays with yeah. the big dogs. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the first time I went on on the weekdays was I was part of a tangent. Um, Mons, very very good friend of mine who I later found out I was related to. Shout out um, to Mons. Yeah, shout out to Mons, man. Um, he yeah he just told me everything about rhythm and you know just curating content and you know the the playlist and stuff mm. um that yeah that was it was really fun with him man it's definitely an art to it isn't it because it's not only yeah. are you um talking in between sets but you know playing playing the right kind of music for the right kind you know for the right time of the day and you know yeah all, all that answering stuff. Must phone been, calls like phone calls that's the one those. thing i didn't do i like I think you you asked me so many times to do like you know like oh can I call? I remember I remember once I was so close to saying yes you you messaged me and goes oh listen we're we're talking about health do you mind if I call you up and and do yeah. uh, talk a little bit about health and, and you talk about physical health and I'm a mental health nurse I don't know a lot about <laughs> I've forgotten all of that <laughs> stuff and and I was like oh should I do it you know I can get on the radio it's you know and I was like no I'm just gonna look like an ass so I yeah. I, I declined but <laughs> no yeah I, I had to google that stuff after you said no to me man yeah uh. my apologies a long <laughs> a long way to the apology but I'm finally giving it and that's a couple of years now but yeah, yeah. okay and anything during your time as a radio host that that really stood out to you um, man, I, I think, you know, it, again, it's, it's, it's just talking to the people and, you know, it, it's that storytelling element that's coming in, not storytelling from myself, but from the, from the people you interview, you know, coming in. Um, I remember my favorite interview ever, um, was when we interviewed John Thuy, right. um, the, the actor. And at the time it was for, for Born to Dance when that first came out the new zealand film. and yeah the new zealand film. Yeah. he um he he plays the father in the movie and i remember um you know because at that time he had been in battleship mm. um he had been in a couple of overseas productions and we asked him you know what's what's your advice for like up and coming talents like who want to get into the industry and for him he was saying you know there's a lot of bus figure people, up and coming actors that he sees that sort of, you know, put their put the heritage to the side and mm. try and, you know um, try and try and be a bit more fear to, right. to get into the being to the someone industry. that they're not. Yeah, get to get along and get along with everyone pretty yeah. much. But he said, you know, it's it's the one thing about him that made him stand out from the rest when he was working overseas. Mm. And he was, you know, imploring these people, like, don't forget your roots, because that's what separates you from the rest. No, definitely. And, yeah, and I, it's, it's just one piece of advice that I, I just kept with me for ages. And then, you know, when um, when the legend of Baron Thor came out, uh, he came into the, into Tangata Pasifika for, for an interview, and I, I told him about that story and about his advice, and I ended up... <laughs> I ended up like crying like an idiot uh, in front of him. <laughs> I was so embarrassed afterwards. But he you're, the, was, you're the crying think, Tongan, Alice. I am. I'm a crying Tongan. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, but he, I think he was really moved by it, and uh, I think he was surprised as well that I had I had remembered that. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's one of the things that always stuck with me. Yeah, no, that I mean that makes so much sense. I mean, in in a in an industry where you, being unique is actually uh an advantage it's an advantage you know yeah for sure you you want to u- utilize as much of that as possible and the easiest exactly. one i can think of at the top of my head is is Dwayne the rock johnson he reps yeah. Samoa hard 
You know, exactly. you don't you don't see him pretending to be, you know, you know, um, Balangi and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, he's grown up most of his life in in the United States and Hawaii and stuff. Um, but he he recognizes his roots, you know, and and I think that's played a big part in him in, in his in his stardom. You know, not to mention the, all the other things that he's also very talented. Yeah. At, but that's what makes him unique because exactly. You, I, I think if you take away his Samoan, you know, PI card. You know, if if we could magically do that, there is so many other people out there that's very similar to what he can do. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and this it sounds like I'm shitting on the rock. I, I'm really not. You know, I'm 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 saying it's it's hard enough. It's one of those. It, yeah, it's hard enough to try and get into m- movies, for example, right? Yeah, it, it's oh, hard for enough. Sure. Yeah. And and to sort of. You know, and he he found you know that niche. You know, he was already quite well known in in wrestling. But how many other wrestlers went on to be major film stars? Not a lot. You Not know? a lot. Yeah. You Not know? to the level that he's at either. No. No. I mean, there's there's been a lot that's done films, but film yeah. stars. That's that's different. You yeah. Know? And I mean, he's got his own production company now. You mm. know, Seven Bucks Productions, which is crazy. I mean. He's got all these like little side hustles and stuff. It's it's just crazy. Um, he's a he's a great example, and so is so is Taika Waititi. Oh, Taika Waititi, god damn! Like that. I don't know. Any what can other we say? Like Taika. What what can we say about about a, a growing legend before you know someone yeah. who's very quickly becoming a legend right before our eyes? You know. Yeah, absolutely. When I, I've got a very fond memory of one of his early um, short films. And when I moved here and I was living in a hostel, uh, there was a guy who, who lived in the room next to me, Vaha. And he showed me this short film. And uh, it was the one where there was those two kids in the parking lot. Two kids, uh, two cars, one night? Two cars, one night. And I thought how amazing he was able, to, you know, just, just how amazing that storytelling was. Of, of those kids mm. if, if for those people out there who haven't seen I, I doubt there's a lot of people that haven't seen it but if you haven't you should definitely youtube you know two cars one night mm. and it's 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 an amazing little piece that shows off really a lot of what is now in a lot of you know taika's films you know you can see that yeah. same sort of style coming through it in his in his major productions which is amazing but he's an awesome person man that um that short film actually ended up kind of being in, in Boy. Yes, it did. It yeah. did. That, I, I noticed that too. Um, that that scene where they're both out of uh, outside the um, the bar. And he's, yeah, yeah. No, no, for sure. That's the one. No, no, definitely. <laughs> I, 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 I smirked when I saw that too. I was like, I know exactly what he's nodding towards. <laughs> That You're is... one of those guys, eh? Well, no. You were like, uh, did, did anyone else notice that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm more of those guys that's like, let me explain to you the significance of this scene. I don't know. Like, if you know, I'm going to make sure you know even better. So let me explain it to you. So I'm probably one of those guys. Yeah. You know? <laughs> which, which, is a, which is quite annoying for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're definitely that guy in the family. <laughs> no, no, I'm Actually, please, please, if we're going to talk about people who are who are in who who abruptly interrupt people during a film, that is going to be you, Ellis. No, no. let, let's let's be fair. No. Let's be fair. I remember when we were actually any movie we watch. I do I do remember you always have this line. That's a great shot. That's an awesome <laughs> shot. Look at the lighting on that on that on that on that scene. That's an awesome scene. <laughs> so yeah, I think right. I think I think you hold the crown with that one, Alice. Quite, quite. quite. <laughs> and, and I think hey, call I, me I out, think man. Yeah, call yeah. Me out. it's all good. Well, I'm just defending myself, but but it's a no, good thing. Okay, obviously, good. obviously going to uh, <laughs> going to film school, you obviously have learned how to critique films. So why not? Yeah. Why not utilize that degree? You know. Yeah. If you can't make movies, then just talk about them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's how I it starts. I just dug my own grave there, didn't I? <laughs> no, no, I think that's how it, I think I think, you know, your passion for it is still very much alive. You know, you're wait, you're, you're probably waiting for the right opportunity. And it's not like you're not working in film now, you know? You you you're seeing what the background um work uh that's being done. You know, and it's all experience at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? Secretly. I'll all I'll say is secretly. Oh, secretly. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait to have you back on once you've released your first film then. <laughs> so, 
So I, I, I've got, yeah, yo. Um, I was gonna say let's go, but that's that really annoys me. That word. It's I, been overdone, eh? Yeah, no, it's just. Yeah. I was listening to another podcast. I'm not gonna say it, but then every other word was like, "Yo, let's go, let's go." Right. So, and I was like, "Oh man, please don't say that anymore. It's yeah. it's 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 too much for my ears." But then, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but it, <laughs> wait, I actually I actually want your 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 opinion. So okay. you you've kind of worked in quite a few different um. Uh, parts of the media industry you know you've worked in radio you've worked in film you've worked on tv shows you're currently working uh, for Tangat Pacifica and uh, you know I've recently stepped into this new realm of podcasting and I'm doing air quotes here stepping into the world of podcasting what do you think is the biggest difference between this podcasting and sort of the current uh, well-established media that's out there I think with podcasting, um, there, there's it's it's a lot more relaxed mm. because you know when I when I look at like other media outlets like just in terms of um, time limits, getting things to air, um, mm. there, there's so much of that that goes on. Whereas podcasting is, is so intimate, like you actually allow people to come in and have genuine conversations. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like talking with a friend or, you know, mm. or talking with, with family. Um, yeah, that's like one main difference I can I can see with podcasting. Yeah, I, that's exactly why I fell in love with podcasting, L- listening to podcasting, that is. Um, mm. A lot of the time, what frustrates, I mean, I'm, I, I watch the news as much as the next guy around here. I watch, you know, um, Parliament TV every so often when you're really <laughs> bored. But you know, you know, and you know, I watch big interviews with sports stars and movie stars and stuff like that. But th- the biggest thing I noticed was that the time limit. You know, mm. uh, and you mentioned that you know the time limit and everything obviously um, needs to be done um, at a certain time. You know, you people have deadlines. You need to release um, this interview to go along with this show. You know, the news needs to be done every day. You know, yeah. um, and with that, I feel like they need to cut a big part of what that interview had been, and you tend to lose a lot of the essence of it. Now, oh, I, mean, man. I mean, you probably know this better than I, but you know, you can do like a two, three hour day where you're sort of interviewing a person or you're sort of filming a person, but that gets cut down to like seven minutes, you know? Yeah. It, it may be, you know, some of the highlights of, of the interview, but it really takes away the, uh, I guess, yeah. the power of it, you know? You're you're so right. Um, you know, for for lack of a better phrase, like um, killing your darlings, you know, killing mm. your darlings. That's, mm. it, it always pains me um, because a majority of what I do at, at TP is, is the online stuff. Right. And the, the general rule of thumb is, is that you keep these interviews to two or three minutes. And, Sometimes there's just really beautiful moments mm. that you can't fit in the edit. Mm. That that kills me, eh? Like that pains me so much mm. to to let it go because I feel like um, you know, these little nuggets of wisdom, um, someone it, someone out there is going to appreciate it. Oh, for sure. You know, if, uh, if you if you put it in, um, but I think that's that's the great thing about podcasting as well is that you get to keep all of that all of that stuff in like mm. do you do you find it hard yourself when um when you're kind of editing a, a podcast um do you find it hard to, to cut down anything or do you cut down anything at all um I, I i kind of talked to you about this like way before this this podcast i think i, I was looking for feedback and you were just talking about you know editing stuff and it, it did make me think because my, cause my wife started talking about you know maybe we should edit some of some of the stuff down um but it's really hard for me to do that I mean, I've mm. I've resorted to editing out, you know, certain parts, maybe um, some dead air, or if there's like, a, a, you know, when 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 I say um and then have this long pause, like I, I, you know, there's little bits and pieces yeah. that I cut out. But in terms of the the general conversation, I try to keep it as pure as possible. You know, I yeah. think it's that that's the whole point of podcasting and 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 if you need a podcasting you know listening to podcasts it, it's quite a quite a lengthy thing to get into you know i mean fucking hell the good podcasts are like an hour two hours yeah, long 
you know, yeah. um, because if, if you think about it, if, if a podcast is basically a conversation that you're recording, you know, and yeah. if you have, you know, if you can think back to your, you know, any of your decent conversations you've had with friends or family, you, you know, they're actually that long, you know, you, you can, yeah. what, what the tongue is called, bota la noa. You know, yeah. where people just talk and talk and talk. Me and your brother do this a lot. Whenever he comes from Australia and and he, and, I, and he visits, I, we just talk for hours, talk, yeah. man. We just talk for hours for upon sure. hours. But it doesn't feel that way, you know. It doesn't yeah. feel like you've been sitting here for the last three hours talking nonsense, you know, you, exactly. because it, you're, you're having a good time. The the other thing I I really like about podcasts, it's not a debate. You know, a lot of the times yeah. I, I listen to um, a lot of podcasts where they have differing opinions. You right? You know, one person is, is has a very strong opinion about abortion. The other person doesn't. But they're not arguing about it. You know, the one person presenting yeah. an argument, they discuss that, you know, that, that argument and they sort of look at, you know, both sides of things. And then someone will, will present a counter argument. And it's not like... Uh, you know, in in a debate, it's very structured. You know, you have five yeah. minutes to say your part. You have five minutes to you know rip that rip that part to shreds. So there's actually no proper dialogue and no learning in a debate. You know, because you're trying yeah. to get one up, up on the other. But with podcasting, I feel that you actually go away learning something a bit more yeah. about a, a different opinion because you're not in this heated this heated debate about you're right and and no i'm right and you're wrong sort of thing you know yeah you're you're removing um like uh, a lot of the the bravado mm. like you're you're removing a lot of like it's, when cameras are put in front of a person like they're going to perform do you know what i mean oh for sure so you you're you're gonna act in in certain ways that you probably wouldn't act if you were just seated in front of the person talking mm. you know in a civil manner yeah. about a topic that they probably disagree on like off you know? the record stuff you know um yeah because if you look at um you know i watch a lot of um well in in, in my sort of later years I've, I've become very fascinated with american politics i mean who who isn't with who trump, isn't who yeah. isn't with trump being the president <laughs> at the moment you know there's always something interesting going on there but you know yeah. I've, i i started also getting into a um uh, something they hold every year called politicon so it's it's obviously a a take on Comic Con where all these um you know um well known um po not not necessarily politicians but um um politics uh, uh reviewers oh, what what are they what are they called commentators you know oh right right you know um commentators on politics you know the people like yeah. um I don't know if you heard of Ben Shapiro um the Young Turks yes um Steve yeah, Crowder the Young Turks. all 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 these all these guys you know who are have have quite a big voice on on media but they come in and and they have you know like serious hardcore debates about you know whether it's um taxes whether it's about um abortion or you know very very serious topics that you know that's currently going on um in america and i find it so fascinating listening to that kind of media but at the end of the day i feel none of them actually leave learning you know one goes as a loser one leaves as a winner and mm. you, your perspective isn't, you know, widened any further. Yeah. You know, you've just actually probably cemented your opinion even further. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you if you want like your your opinion verified, like you go to those sorts of things. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of, of course. You, it, yeah. It's like an echo chamber for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. You know. You know. But and you can tell when they sort of um, say sort of buzzwords. You know, like social justice. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there they are, yeah. the social justice warriors. <laughs> You know, but it, it's it, it has its purpose. You know, I mean, that's where people start um, dialogues. It is through debate, and a lot of um, you know, I, I mean, just thinking closer to home, a lot of our um laws and things are put into place through debate. You know, and then mm -hmm. debate through parliament, and that's that's interesting in itself. You know. Yep. Um, but I think you know, if people, you know, especially like people who are who run our country, you know, essentially. You know, when certain certain social um, issues arise in society, I think instead of a debate, a you know a discussion about the benefits of both sides would be a much more productive um pr productive way to go about it. But then that's that's the ideal. Mm, that's that's the ideal. Man. And I'm thinking of uh, you know, this is a in 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 a perfect world. And obviously, we don't live in a perfect world. 
So, I, I was actually going to ask, would you would you host uh, that kind of debate or conversation on your podcast? I, w- I would love to have a conversation with people. Um, I, I have a, c- a couple of people um, in my mind that I want on the show who have quite differing differing opinions than a lot of people. Um, I'm not going to name their names now because just in case they decide not to do it at the end. <laughs> um, yeah. but, but, but it's not really a debate I want. I want them to be in, in a space where they're happy to express their opinion. Um, there's a lot of issues now where a lot of people's opinion who isn't part of the well-established mainstream view, um, mm-hmm. they get shouted down. They, you know, they, they're not allowed to speak. Um, and essentially, a lot of their, you know, um, to use the American phrase, freedom of speech is being um, being uh, impeded on. You know, um, and, <laughs> yeah. But but I think <laughs> but I think it, it's unfortunate because the best way to sort of know your neighbor is to allow them to have uh, have a say you know mm-hmm. i think i would i would i would like to have to know who the racists are in the world you know yeah i, I would like to know them by their face you know I, I don't like you know shutting people down and then they have to go underground and, and have secret you know secret meetings like cancel culture and stuff. yeah yeah, uh, and, yeah. And, and that's become such a i don't know how, how you feel about the cancel culture but i think it's such a such a st- Stupid, stupid thing to, uh, for people to toxic. call for. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, yeah, I think it's toxic because, you know, as soon as you cancel, I mean, I've seen like people cancel others online for, for like the stupidest things, mm. you know, and if you're not giving them a chance to learn or, you know, a chance to learn from, from their mistakes, then how, how are we supposed to get better? Exactly. You know? I mean, the best everyone thing you can... makes mistakes and everyone says stupid things like you need to allow them the opportunity to yeah like correct their wrongs pretty much hmm. but that's how you learn you know you you say exactly. something that you that you believe at the time someone comes up and and has a discussion with you and probably presents you with with evidence that or not really evidence but a point of view that you never considered before and that's the seed that gets sown where people's opinions start to change you know mm. I, I mean a lot of people's opinions are are learnt, you know, they learnt from childhood, and and they aren't given uh, outside perspectives to challenge those those long held beliefs. Um, this, you know, same thing with exactly, um, you know, and that's relating back to our earlier conversation about um, uh, people's views of PIs in New Zealand. You know, we're we're put into such a little box, um, and now we're starting to challenge that narrative, which is awesome. You know, and, I, and yeah. I'm hoping it'll continue um, as the years progress. You know. Because we're we're, sure, very, we're we're definitely a very uh, integral part of New Zealand society now, you know. I don't think for sure. I mean, the the easy and I always go for the easy examples. I mean, look at the examples of um, sports, you know. Yeah. Um. How there's how, like yeah. There, there's you know there's there's other examples that I mean I I've, I've only come to discover in recent years through my job, um, which I'm really thankful for. Um, you know, I remember growing up as a kid and and seeing. Anzac Day, mm. and thinking, oh, that's it was like a solely Balangi thing, you know. It was Australian New Zealand soldiers, right. you know, fighting in Gallipoli, and then, you know, seeing all these and uh, all these stories getting covered of of you know Nguyen soldiers, Tongan soldiers, Samoan mm. soldiers, you know, going over to fight during World War One, you know, ending up in Europe, ending up in Palestine and Egypt. Mm. I was like what the heck i had never heard of these stories in my life it's amazing though isn't it i mean it's amazing yeah, how it, it's it's they they were never they were never a part of that narrative before mm. and it's only it's only in recent years where these stories are starting to to come to the forefront mm. and realize you know we're, we're much more integral to mm. to the fabric of this country than people yeah. think we are we're not just a, a recent phenomenon you know where people mm. think we just came over during the the 70s and, and 60s mm. um during that time you know we, we've been around for for much for much longer like mm. people have relied on the pacific not only for our our talents but our labor and our resources like there, there's so much history there that that hasn't been told enough mm. and we've yeah. moved so beyond being immigrants you know i think we're now for sure. how many generations of of new zealand born Pacific Islanders who who make up the fabric of our society, you know. 
Um, so we're, we're far from it. And, and I think, you know, and, and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm always trying to add something positive to my conversations because I tend to go down a very ne- <laughs> negative <laughs> viewpoint. Um, a lot of people tell me, you know, it's like, wow, that, that conversation was interesting, but you were, you're so negative. I was like, I, I'd like to call myself a realist. <laughs> Sometimes that does apply though, you know, yeah, you, know, you gotta sure. be, you gotta be real. You, got, you gotta be real. You gotta be real. <laughs> So, uh, just sort of touching on Anzac a little bit, uh, you, you had a you have a relative that was part of the Anzac um, um, in, uh, uh, move to Gallipoli. Um, yes, are you comfortable talking a little bit about that? Uh, if you know, have you done any research uh, into him? From from what I know, because um, he is he is documented. Um, um, he is uh, they're, well, they're both in the museum. Mm. Um, so it was. Um, Baisley Ledger and Frank Ledger, this is on my mother's side, um, they both fought in World War I. Mm. Um, and I think they ended up, I think they were in the 3rd Māori Battalion. So they, oh, wow. they fought with, uh, fought with a, a Māori contingent. Um, so they went to Egypt um, and to, to Palestine as well, I think. Jeez. Um, and it's, this is what's crazy to me. I mean, they, they survived that war and they come back. And then they tried to apply to fight in World War Two. Oh, okay. I was like, "What the heck?" But they were they were denied on the grounds of age. So um. by that time, they were already, um, yeah, they they were already too old um, to to fight. But I mean, their nephews ended up mm. going to go to go and fight in the war. So that's yeah, a, it's um, it's such crazy a brave thing to do. Away, I mean, you just come back from, you know, World War One, which. A- yeah. Any war is quite a quite a serious and traumatic event to be a part of, whether you survive it, you know, unscathed. I mean, you you will have scars from it, you know, whether it's physically or emotionally. But to then, you know, find the courage to do it again, you know, man. Jeez. And then on top of that, like they they would have been they would have been around our age or even younger. Man. And yeah, and to say yes, and you know, be shipped off to the other side of the world. Um, into a climate that you're not even used to. I mean, mm. I've heard some really, I've read some really sad stories about soldiers who weren't acclimatized to the cold, and um, that actually, you know, brought them quicker, um, quicker deaths, which was yeah. really sad. Yeah, I mean, you you read any sort of um, history about you know World War One, two, even even the recent stuff in 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 the Middle East, it, it's it, yeah. not a lot of um, positive spins on it. You know, it, it's. <laughs> It's a lot of, you know, a lot about death, a lot about trauma, a lot about, you know, horrific scenes. But but it's it's one of those things where it's important. I think it's important to know how horrific war is because that then causes people to think twice about engaging in it, you know? that You would think that, eh? Like, you would think that people, you know, look at the atrocities of the past and learn from it. But I feel like we don't learn from history enough. Mm. No, no, definitely not. But I do think, yeah. I mean... I do think we have definitely gone better since then. I think we've developed systems, whether it's um, through um, diplomacy or for other things, where people are more likely to go down that route than actual war. Yeah. Um, and I think people have, you know, that they're. I mean, it's so. It's, you know, World War One and World War Two not only is documented in books but in film too. You know, so yeah. it's not like we're going to forget it anytime soon. And I don't For think sure. we should ever forget it anyway. I mean, all those brave men and women who sort of sacrificed their lives, you know, to build what is arguably the best time in, in the our entire existence to be living. Um, yeah. Is, is worth remembering, you know? Exactly. There's like so much opportunities and stuff we have now that they didn't have. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't glorify war. Um but I think there's it, there's certain parts of um, our history where there there was no choices, you know. Yeah. And I, I think it, we're very lucky that, you know, that the Allies won. You know, we're, we're very lucky <laughs> that, um, you know, <laughs> that, that would be a hell of a lot different. Yes. If they yes. Didn't. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would we be having this conversation if they didn't? Who knows? I don't. I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, probably not. I mean, if you think of like communists, you know, socialist parties, it, it's it's all about central control and what you can do and what you can say, and 
you know, I don't think it would have been the nicest thing in the world, to be honest. I think, I think New Zealand's a really good example of how to do things. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree on that. Yeah. Mm. Um, so at the moment, are you working on any, any, I guess, uh, any, any projects, um, anything that's in the woodwork that, that you've been working on that, that you're happy to share or, or is everything still hush hush at the moment? Um, no, no, I'll talk a little bit uh, about um, the current project I'm working on um, was a project that I had put forward um, into a writing workshop. Um, <laughs> see, this is my okay. connection still to film. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's been a bit sly there. Yes. Um, so I did, I did this writing workshop a couple of years ago, and I had pitched an idea um, for it, and um, I actually got some, some mentoring. Awesome. I actually ended up winning some mentoring, uh, yeah, for this project. So it was, um, I left it in the lurch, like once that all wrapped up and I didn't come back, I didn't visit, revisit the project until this year. Mm. So, uh, I've, I've picked it back so up again and the, I've been the pro spending yeah, my so weekends the just basically writing, um, okay. trying to hone it's that craft. Yeah. So, so, so what exactly uh, is, know, is the project a, about? A you, you mentioned something he, about he writing? A funeral parlor. Yeah, um, so it was it was meant to be a short film. Okay. Um, yep. 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 I'm, I'm here. It's, we seem film. to be sort of just cutting in and out. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Ah oh, damn it. Oh, that's okay. Um, no, uh, let, let's just see how things go. I mean, we're, we're okay. sort of we're sort of coming to um, um, my last couple of things I want to touch on anyway. So let, let's just see how it goes. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so the, the project I'm currently writing. Um, it's about this guy, you know, he's, uh, he's a loner, he owns a funeral parlor, and, you know, this, this man pretty much hasn't, um, you know, really lived his life to the full, mm -hmm. and so he's visited by the angel of death, Interesting. <laughs> and he's told, um, you know, if you, if you really want to make something of your life, then come take over my job. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, that does sound interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, I mean, geez, that's that's a that's an interesting play. I mean, from you're like, oh, mm, okay. Oh, I yeah. see. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of I'm sort of um twisting my mustache as I'm listening to this. Like, mm hmm. <laughs> I can see where you're going for those. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so so that's something you're that's in the woodwork at the moment. Awesome. Yeah. Is there um so you've you've obviously been a part of um other projects um is, is there any any other projects that you've been a part of that you are that you're quite that that you enjoyed quite immensely or, or you learned a lot from? Um, I mean, just there were like small things that I did, you know, for other productions, mm. um, you know, other short films, uh. The, the series Baby and Mama's Club was a really fun one to be a part of. Um, and then working on other people's short films, I think it's just that experience of, of seeing um, the industry, uh, you know, regardless of whether you're actually in front of the camera right. um, or working behind it or just making coffee and tea, you know, those small things. Yeah. I think the, the thing I... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know all about making. Oh yes, you, you. I was just about. You well know. To, I was about to say, <laughs> you you are the 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 tea queen of the family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for me, like the I think the experience of just seeing, uh, a speaker filmmakers, Maori filmmakers, right. writers, directors. Uh, just seeing their their voices and and seeing their creative projects come to life on screen, it's it's so much fun um, to be a part of, but it's it's more rewarding to see, yeah, to see online, to see on screen, yeah. That's so cool because you know, um, wasn't so long ago where it wasn't um, wasn't welcomed, you know, it was those it was yeah. more underground um, films that was being done than um, and now it's it's quite widely accepted and and and, and celebrated. Yeah, which is exactly awesome, like. I mean, just in the last couple of years alone, we've had so many Māori Pacific films, mm. you know, be released to, to mainstream New Zealand. It's it's amazing. Well, one of the ones that stand out the most for me is the one that we went and saw, um, the the premiere for um, for My Father's Kingdom. That oh man, that documentary about that um, Tongan family living in New Zealand yeah. and and the struggle that they had 
you know, not only bouncing between um, the New Zealand culture and Tongan culture, but just just the dad's journey of and his and his world view and how how different it is to to what everyone else's is you know um for sure it was such an eye-opening um film for me and, and anyone who's who's you know who's keen should to definitely look it up it's for my father's kingdom and yeah. it, it's you can find it anywhere man you can you can uh, yeah you can find it anywhere not not even just for for a tongan audience i'd say like everyone go and see this movie because there's something in there that you can you can relate to absolutely Absolutely. Yeah. Now it was such a such a cool event too, you know. And um, mm. is, is that one of the first? I don't know if it's the first, but they they, they made quite quite an emphasis on it being funded by um, New Zealand on air, or was it? Uh, uh, the New Zealand Film Commission. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's the first Tongan documentary to be funded um, by the New Zealand Film Commission, which which tells you a lot because, you know, mm. we they wouldn't they wouldn't give the money if we didn't have that audience. No. You know, and our, I mean, our audience has proved to be successful, like, as you would know from the, the rugby league um, mm -hmm. oh. events with, with MMT, oh. like, there are, there are no supporters, like, Tongan supporters. No, no, no. <laughs> God, we, we really, um, we really, really show take up. take the cup with that one. Well, people, if, <laughs> well, if, if you landed during, um, the, you know, the hype of the Matema Tonga, um, craze, if you were a foreigner and you landed in New Zealand, you'd think this is Tonga. <laughs> you know? that, that's how many yeah that's how many red flags you saw how many God. red houses it's one uh, of the, maybe it, it's it's a business worth investing in every uh, every world cup you know buy a couple hundred flags sell them for double the price you know oh, people gosh. will buy don't people, give people ideas man people will buy but this, that's my point people will buy so yeah um geez i mean let's come you know it's it's been coming up to the end of our four weeks here in lockdown you know, we're we're planning on going to level three tomorrow. So we're recording this on Monday. It's Monday today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's Monday the twenty sixth. So we are planning on going into level three tomorrow. Actually, tonight at eleven fifty nine. How how has the last four weeks been um, treating you? Uh, <laughs> you know, what's really funny is that um, in the in the first couple of weeks when it started, because I live alone. Um, I thought I was doing all right. Like I was super productive. Uh, my house was really clean. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was I was really looking after that house. Um, but then I think you know, just seeing the same four walls all the time, and then getting into the the same routine all the time. Um, I just started having like really weird dreams. Yeah. Yeah, you would have seen news reports on that, eh? Like people start to have weird dreams in lockdown. Um, mm. Uh, because it wasn't the news, man. It okay, wasn't the news. okay. It's probably the news, <laughs> the part that I didn't watch. Sorry. No, I, okay. I haven't. I haven't actually haven't heard of that. So, so th there's been news article. Well, there's been news reports of people having weird dreams being in lockdown. Yeah, because you know we're we're just put into a situation that we're not used to. Mm. And so you know when your when your brain's trying to like comprehend the situation and your environment and all these changes at the same time like i guess that's one way of dealing with it giving stress you strange dreams, dreams. it's yeah, stress, stress dreams. dreams okay that makes sense yeah damn no so, i mean um... <laughs> i can't say i've had any stress dreams lately because i'm still technically having to go out and go to work but that yeah. that's interesting to know you know i mean I mean, like I said in the, like, in the last podcast, me and Hunter talked about, um, you know, kind of what our experience has been like during um, during this lockdown. And yeah. because we're such homebodies, our our life hasn't really changed, you know? <laughs> yeah. We stay home mostly anyway, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the, biggest, the biggest change possibly for us has been uh, no takeaways. That's kind of sad to say because oh, I know a yes. lot of people are struggling at the moment with this or that. But that, you know, that's that's the only thing that I had been struggling with is that, you know, that we had no takeaways. Because aside from that, my life is kind of the same. Same, yeah. You know, it's so I weird. I, I definitely struggled um, during Easter, during the, the Easter weekend. Oh, right. It was, I mean, you know, we did a, we did, um, a group chat session with, with all the family. Everyone came on and just looking around at everyone and seeing them, you know, with people. It, yeah, that got to me. <laughs> I don't think I was part of that video. Uh, 
<laughs> oh no no <laughs> this is just my siblings and my oh, parents man. Oops, i was about to say because i know there's been a lot of family stuff going on um and i and i haven't been jumping on i mean like i mean you did an article well you you sort of commissioned our uh, an article i don't know if you commissioned an article or whether you wrote it but the you know of our families um exercise daily exercise routine that was on um tp plus was it tp the tp plus yeah tp plus um it was a really cool, funny article too about how our that, our family to fight uh, boredom and um, unhealthy lifestyles that they've started uh, meeting twice a day over Zoom or over Messenger and and doing exercise routines, which has been awesome and really yeah. annoying for me because I still get those phone calls and I have to hang up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it's but it's so good because I do I do see uh, it, it's one of those coping strategies that our family has sort of um yeah. come up with and i'm sure a lot of people it's, are doing something similar um so yeah it, i have seen it online and it for sure it's been a, a coping strategy for me um because mm. it gives me someone to actually talk to uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know you can still call people during you know i mean yeah you know i call my partner and yeah and, that's true uh, on occasion and stuff but um yeah, on occasion just... <laughs> i call him on occasion <laughs> Poor Nate. Nate, if you're listening yeah. to this, you deserve more than just a call up every every so often. <laughs> Poor Nate. Um, we're you know we we good like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But but you know the the like talking into a screen or talking into a phone like doesn't replace that yeah. that human interaction where you can you know hug your cousins mm. and like laugh out loud with them and share food share a meal together that like, i just miss that so much yeah the face-to-face -face interactions is definitely um a major for a lot of people for sure it, it's yeah. part of the human psyche and, and the human condition to want to be closer to to others and you know and, yeah, and people that you know and um yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 interesting it, if if anything um it makes people uh, uh, you know the lockdown has has made people realize what's important in their lives and you know um you know, hopefully by the end of this, all the people who have had arguments with their siblings in the past or haven't spoken to them, you know, this is that opportunity where you realize that, you know, that whatever you guys, you know, argued about in the past is not as uh, relevant. You know, it's, it's, yeah, man. It's, it's an opportunity. Just hug it out. Hug it out. Wait, 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 hug it out. In level two, not in level three. You're, you're, yeah, not, not, you're not yeah. allowed to hug in level three. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be waiting a long time for those hugs, man. Well, two weeks, two weeks, I think. Yeah. I think they're saying after two weeks in level three, they're gonna if if the numbers remain good, they're gonna trial level two, if I yeah. remember that correctly. So fingers crossed, you know. Um, my life fingers is fingers crossed. I get to hug uh, hug family a lot sooner rather than later. Yeah, but it's the time, mate. Spending spending quality time with everyone will be good. We we definitely have to organize a a, a, a you know a level two party or something. At someone's, yeah. at someone's house. Probably mine. Yeah, man. Just because it's closer Break to out me. the board games. You Break know? out the board games. Board games and beer. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, with a lot of businesses at the moment sort of having to struggle because of having, you know, of lockdown. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of small businesses have um, had to close up permanently. Media is such a big thing where it it's probably hasn't been impacted by by this lockdown but ha has it been impacted at all do you think oh for sure i mean um i mean you know we saw the closure of of bow media um and all those magazines and newspapers right that's true go, going down the drain which is really sad um you know they rely a lot on subscriptions and, and mm. advertising and stuff and if they can't print for people to read like there's just yeah. no no point which is really sad mm. um so i mean that's that's gone down the drain um i will say it it has been harder collecting stories you know just i'm, I'm so used to to going out and interviewing people and recording people and stuff but just having to sit you know and and scroll through social media scroll through the networks trying mm. to find stories yeah it's just a it's a different adjustment eh? I guess it's learning how to work differently. Eh? Yeah, exactly. But you know, what? I'm I'm thankful that I'm still working during this time. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. I, I I mention this as often as I can, but you know, um, for the people who who are lucky enough to still have jobs, really should feel quite thankful for it. You know, and 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 that's my um, 
my biggest concern will be uh, the aftermath of 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 everything, you know, because yeah. I think once we find that vaccine, which which we will, you know, um, we will eventually find a vaccine for for COVID, and 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 people will be allowed to step out back into the world, you know, with 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 no fear. Um, but the impact of it all, you know, with everyone having lost their jobs and stuff, I think is going to be quite a scary thing um, that we haven't realized just yet. Yeah, it's um, it's something I've been contemplating a lot during the lockdown, um, especially with, uh, you know, I've, I've interviewed so many um, bus speaker businesses, um, you know, before the lockdown. And it just made me realize, like, now's a really good time to invest in these businesses, you know, help them, mm. help them stay afloat by actually, you know, purchasing their products or or listening to their music or, you know, mm. or all those little things that you can help. Um, so, like, I've actually resolved, once the lockdown is over, to only, to try and only buy, like, New Zealand brands. Yes. Even going into the supermarket and, and things like that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely something a lot of people will be doing. Um, yeah, man. Got to help boost the economy. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm a, I'm a big, I mean... I, I I'm your average Joe who knows you know probably the bare minimum about how the economy works, but I, I my my biggest fear is that if the economy crashes worse than what it probably is going to be, is that that comes with a whole bunch of other issues. You know, um, mm. I hope we don't get to that stage. Uh, you know, I, I'm quietly optimistic that things will will start to settle. We I, I we tend to sort of always assume the worst with, with a lot of these things. Um. And, and you know, looking at Probably how so though it's, yeah. it's been worse in the past for sure. You know? Oh, oh yeah. absolutely, much much worse. I, uh, you know, when people say, "Oh, we can't," this is we can't compare this to anything else. It's like, yeah, because there's been worse shit out there. You know, the yeah. influenza. <laughs> you know, of of nineteen twelve, exactly. nineteen twelve, eighteen twelve. Anyways, you know, the influenza that killed so many people. You know, I mean, exactly. you know, war. There's been worse things out there. I think it's just something in this day and age that no one expected you know that that's yeah. what you know it just I, I shows how too comfortable our, we are exactly like for all our medical miracles for all our technology and mm. digital advancements and stuff you know we're, we're going through a pandemic mm. <laughs> you know this is something that people only saw in movies oh, yeah you know like um they thought it was a thing of the past but no nah, you know we're, we're going through it God. It just, you know, what makes me laugh though, mm. is that I saw this meme on on Instagram, um, and all these movies that you see, it's always it's always America that saves the world, you know. It's always America <laughs> that comes up. It's always their scientists who come up yes. with a with a with an answer. It's always the Americans. And, stuff. and you know, now they've surpassed, um, you know, they've surpassed China. And Italy, like with the most number of cases, and it's, mm. it's it's crazy to me. Yeah, no, it's um. Yeah, man, those movies lie. No. <laughs> well, first off, those movies are all filmed in Hollywood, and yeah. you, you know, <laughs> you know, for the longest time, you know, America was always seen as the hero. You know, you'd probably have an English or German um pro um antagonist. You know, yeah. but then it's yep. <laughs> but but you know, but who who knew that some country like little like New Zealand would, would would have done what countries with you know a hundred times our GDP would would you know would be able to achieve that they couldn't you know which is to within four weeks we were pretty mm. much able to to exactly, minimize or, or stop you know a massive community spread of, of, of COVID-19 which is which is a miracle in itself you know I mean if, if anyone's really yeah looking to find God this is that miracle right there yeah you know, exactly at, i remember looking at the predictions prior to this lockdown and they were talking about you know after the first week ten thousand. you know they're, yeah they're it was the great. 10 20 thousand people would would be infected and half that number would possibly you know be dead you know so they, they really and i don't know whether this is just the media or or the government um i'm um, showing us the grimmest of, of things to sort of help push a narrative but it, it was not like it wasn't lost on us, you know. I mean, you only had to yep. look at other countries to see that the the devastation 
of, of mm. COVID it had on the on, on their um on their country to sort of just you know just think well maybe I will stay home <laughs> maybe I will <laughs> abide by this lockdown you know and I guess the first couple of weeks was always the scariest because you know um especially um where I work we everything changed almost daily our protocols were changed you know new policies were implemented you know for for our safety and I think I think New Zealand DHBs all round did the best. Um, that they could and and we it we're obviously you know um benefiting from that now with the numbers being so low but, uh, yeah but I, th um, I guess what i'm hoping is that we come out of this much more stronger you know much more um closer and, and especially as a nation but yeah but i'm also being very mindful that i don't <laughs> you know and this is where my conspiracy theory comes through is that <laughs> you know um I don't want this to be seen as normal, that the government can dictate that the entire country does something and we have to abide by it. Because, you know, I think during during a pandemic, and, and I'm going very off topic here, but I feel like I just, now, now I'm on this <laughs> tangent, I need to, I need to follow this you pathway. Need to get it out. <laughs> I need to follow this pathway. You know, is that the, the last thing we, you know, or I guess the point I was trying to make is that it, in a pandemic, having, um, being told, you know, we, we have essentially given up certain liberties and, and, and freedoms um, for health, you know, um, mm -hmm. and it's things that everyone's agreed to do. And, and I've agreed to it. And I believe it, it's the best thing possible um, moving forward. And it's obviously helped. I think I'm wary that the government can use very similar powers to control, um, to control us to the point where we have no rights whatsoever. So it, it, it's a it's a it's a far stretch, you know. It, it's quite a it's quite a far stretch of of who we are as a country, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. But I I personally am just oh oh sorry hit my own mic. I'm always going to be wary um, when when governments um, make big calls like this. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think I, you know that's that's why it's so important to to vote for for leaders that you you trust. Mm. You know, because like like you said, like I think they've done a, a great job in, in containing this, and you know they've they've made these choices out of necessity. Mm. Um, so I don't think they'd make those choices um, out of oppression. Yeah, but I think a lot of that stems from good intentions, you know. Because there's a lot of positive stuff that's happened thus far during this lockdown. Pollution's much more better. Um, there's uh, a, 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 oh, lot, yeah. a lot of stuff has 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 come to light where things are a lot more better. And who's it, to say? You that, know what? Yeah. It it, it reminded me in, of uh, <laughs> it reminded me of of Avengers Endgame mm -hmm. when Captain America you know comes to see Black Widow, um, you know, at the beginning of the film, and he says that um, he saw a pot of whales. Yeah. In the bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. So like. <laughs> Because there's so yeah, because there's no one's been doing anything. People. Well, well, nature's yeah. given given time to um to breathe, you know. Yeah, exactly. What I think is really important, um, you know, once we we come out of this lockdown, once we get over this crisis, is that we we shouldn't actually go back to the way things were. Mm. Like so many so many things, like you said, the environment. So many beneficial things have happened. Um, to, to the to the environment that we need to reassess the ways we were working before and think okay so what was what was it about the ways that we were living that was so harmful mm. like to the to the environment like how do we how do we change that oh absolutely you know um and, and i think um people will change the way that we do things especially companies you know i mean looking at um businesses who still were able to run and having people work mm. from home as an example right I mean, they're going to yep. look at these things and think, listen, we've had the entire staff work from home. We've still managed to be productive. Why do we need to pay rent to, to uh, of, on this big building? You know, why do we need to build more buildings when we can find a way for people to work from home? I, I, I think, you know, as an example, right? So yeah. I do yeah. think people are going to, there is going to be a lot of changes in how we work and how we live our life and, and our perspective on, on what's important. Um but that's, I think, is still, and this is me being, you know, playing the devil's advocate. I think it's going to be a, a minority that's going to change because essentially people want to go back to normality, right? Yeah. 
and unfortunately i think that's what's going to end up happening um but i do think a lot that there's definitely going to be some positives to say that there's going to be no positives would be silly i think there's going to be some some good things that's going to come out of this anyway yeah, to say that there there would be no positives, then I'd really tell you that you you are definitely a pessimist. <laughs> yeah, I try, man. I try. I try to think of something positive, but then my positive brain makes a positive statement and then just sort of doubles back and says something count to counteract that positive statement. I don't know, man. I need therapy, possibly. So you need a hug. <laughs> yes, yes. I think you need the hug, Alice. To be honest. <laughs> Yeah, I need, uh, yeah, I need that. <laughs> Listen, I, I appreciate you so much being on the podcast. We've been on the podcast for about an hour twenty-two, you know. So, oh wow, and and I've learned so much about what you do and and the current standards of media and everything like that. Uh, I really appreciate you being on, like I like I mentioned. So, I, I'm paying you back a favor. I've always asked for shout outs on your show when you're a radio <laughs> host. Now I'm giving you the opportunity to do some shout outs on this one. So if you have any oh. shout outs, this is your opportunity. You know what? I'm I'm going to give you a shout out. Oh. And the the reason why I'm going to give you a shout out is because you know, I've I've never known you to be uh, a storyteller. Mm. You know, and I never knew you had this interest in media and then when you came up with this podcast and hearing your first podcast and hearing how well you you tell these stories and you bring people into your experiences and um, and you you share so much um, as well from your own story um, and and Honey has, as well has shared so much like it was just such an interesting uh, you know podcast to, to listen to so I, I got to give you kudos like for for taking the initiative and actually chasing something you you know you really really wanted to do without like any help at all you just like set it up on the download and then just surprise us all with it you know oh i, I appreciate Kudos that a lot. to you man and i, I have to say as well yes i i gotta say as well you, you're you're a great interviewer Ooh. as well i've really enjoyed listening to the to the previous conversations and, and podcasts you've had man uh, I, that means so much for someone who um who does uh, interviews for a living i really do appreciate it alice if if you were here you'd see me blushing now um and i really have nothing <laughs> I, I i'm speechless <laughs> I'm very speechless. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what to say. You, you can give me that. Uh, give me that fifty bucks later, on, man. I'll give you. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll. Luckily, to transfer money, we don't need to okay. leave our house. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate it. You know, I mean, this this whole thing started off as 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 a hobby, which it still is. But um, you know, I'll keep doing it as long as other people are are enjoying it, and I'm enjoying it too. So, no, thanks thanks for that. You know, I appreciate that. So no much. worries, man. So yeah, so listen, we'll wrap up the podcast. Um, you can find us on you can find the Thought Plantation podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Just uh, search us up on Thought Plantation podcast. You can find this on all your local streaming sites, iTunes, uh, Anchor, Spotify. We're all there, man. Um, I as always, I appreciate everyone listening in. If you have any questions, just DM me, man. DM me on Instagram or Facebook. I will respond. I have a very quick response time. Ask the two people who's ever messaged me on Instagram. <laughs> I have messaged them back ASAP. So, yeah. So, listen. Thanks so much, Alice, for being a part of the podcast. And um, we'll catch you in the next one, eh? Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. Sweet. Sweet.